if you dissent from the idea that America is good, that is not, in fact, the highest form of patriotism. But the Conservative commentator Ben Shapiro took real issue with people discussing America's dark past, calling it unpatriotic and going as far as defending European settlers. Watch this. All righty. So, meanwhile, the, the left has increasingly ceded the notion of patriotism to the right. And they're starting to realize that this is a problem. So much of what they're indoctrinating our children into in the public schools is a notion that America is at baseline, at root, a very, very bad place. And as Cory Bush says, a place uh, built upon stolen land. And if by this she means that the United States was built on military conquest and settling, that is true for literally every civilization in the history of mankind. It's just that the United States was really good at it. Uh, or the, the original inhabitants of the United States from Europe uh, were, were, were more had a higher ability to occupy land and dispossess the people who are on it uh, than other people who had previously existed on the continent. But the notion that the United States is uniquely bad in world history is, of course, belied by the reality of what the United States has been, namely a nation that sacrificed hundreds of thousands of people to end slavery, a nation that freed Europe multiple times, that defeated communism, that made itself the most racially tolerant place on planet Earth. Literally, there is no more racially tolerant place than the United States on planet Earth. And yet the notion of the left is that true patriotism is anti-patriotism. We saw this a lot during the Bush administration. Dissent is the highest form of patriotism, is what you, current, you, you constantly heard. Well, it depends on what the nature of the dissent is. Because if you dissent from the idea that America is good, that is not, in fact, the highest form of patriotism. But the left seems to be ceding root ba baseline patriotism to the right, which is a hell of a political move. All right, I'll get to the uh, meat of his argument here in a second. But first, of course, he throws out several straw man arguments, as he always does, to try and bolster his own arguments, which don't make any sense. So he claims here that the that the left is saying America is uniquely bad. Nobody's saying America is uniquely bad, but America has more power than most countries, it, militarily, culturally, wealth. So when we are looking at countries that ha can have a, a massive impact on not just Americans, but the world as a whole, America is a good place to start. Now, uh, and this isn't, you know, a competition for the worst country. I don't, who cares who the worst country is? <laughs> like, let's look at what, who has power and how they can use that power for good. He also says here, the left is indoctrinating kids to believe that America is a very bad place, which even if you want to, which is ridiculous, but even if you, if you want to say that's true, let's look at the results of that. I mean, <laughs> here you have from the Southern Poverty Law Center, only 8% of high school senior, seniors can identify slavery as the central cause of the Civil War. If the left is indoctrinating kids to believe that America is a very bad place, then why don't they even know a, a basic, you know, part of American history? So, <laughs> even on the face of his own argument, it's ridiculous. But let's get to the heart of his issue here. Here he is, in this entire clip, equating patriotism with blind support of America's atrocities. I would think a true patriot would, would want to do everything they can to improve life for people in their country. And that also includes being aware of America's dark past, which gets us to the amazing quote here, where he said, quote, the original inhabitants of the United States from Europe were more, had a higher ability to occupy land and dispossess the people who were on it than other people who had previously existed on the continent. This is the most roundabout way of describing genocide that, I, that I've that i ever seen. He could have just said genocide, but he knows that doesn't sound good. So he resorts to this explanation as a way to hide the uh, brutality of what European settlers did. So him here, like not understanding that criticisms of the U.S. have a point. I think this is ultimately the problem here. And whether, again, he understands that or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is his actual impact, the, the impact that his commentary has. So essentially here, he thinks that criticizing America is unpatriotic. But criticisms of America aren't just raised for no reason. They're raised as, a, as you know, at least a, a couple of reasons. For one, an education to understand, you know, past sins and give society a better understanding of what not to do in the future. But also, it's a way to shine a light on what needs to be done politically to address the societal impact that America has had, both 
within its own borders, but also outside of its borders. So there is an actual purpose to criticizing American policy and America's past. What's the purpose of avoiding these criticisms? What's the purpose of avoiding America's past? It's just to avoid a situation where you're forced to admit that changes need to be made. Changes that may impact you as somebody who is incredibly privileged in society. So, and on top of that, of course, it's also a way to just feel good about yourself, feel good about America, not having to acknowledge any of its atrocities. So Ben is quite literally putting feelings over facts. But this is the guy that says, you know, facts over feelings. Meanwhile, uh, clearly showing that for him, it's all about the feelings.